Barrister Jyotirmai Borua. Since you are really, you are like a walking bridge school, um, you and your colleagues at SOPL, um, where you can bridge activists like us and uh, lawyers and the understanding of law. So could you tell us more about uh, this act, which has been uh, you know, extended time and again by the government and why? Thank you, Vidya. You have given a really vivid um, picture of the background of the law and what sort of role it is basically playing. Um, I'm not going to go into those background details any further because uh, whatever you explained is basically clear enough um, to understand what is happening. And uh, I'm just going to take you through um, certain provisions of the law to give you a better understanding of the wording they use in the actual law. I have shared the English version of the law with Mehdi. Um, you can get access to that particular English version of the law from him if you um, are interested in. I'm just going to give you a, 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 the preamble of the law gives certain background, a, a small paragraph, if you allow me to read it. It is an act to make special provisions for facilitating effective and urgent matters to enhance the generation, transmission, transportation, and marketing of electricity and energy with a view to ensuring an interrupted supply of electricity and energy, keeping pace with the demands of agricultural, industrial, commercial, and domestic activity, and for quick implementation of the plan to import electricity and energy from abroad, if necessary, and for implementation of the decision on urgent extraction and utilization of minerals related to energy. That is. That is the law says in the preamble that why they are enacting this law in 2010. As you know, we had our um, energy master plan in 2010. As part of that uh, master plan, they have enacted this law. Um, a section, I'm going to go through only four to five sections very quickly. Um, on uh, section three of the act, it says uh, the non obstante clause, you know, the overriding principle of the law that uh, this present law shall prevail over any other previous law. It says, it's very interesting what they said in this particular section, because if you consider other laws, most of the laws have this non obstante clause, but this non obstante clause is very much peculiar to us. Look at the uh, wording of it. Notwithstanding anything contained in the Public Procurement Act 2006, Act number 26 of 2006, or any other law, for the time being enforced, the provisions of this act shall prevail. Why they had to mention this Public Procurement Act 2006? This particular act of 2006 basically ensures certain transparency of public procurement process. So they had to publish open tenders, allow the readers to participate, and then in an open process, they have to finalize the procurement um, process of the government. This is how it is done. And we have a particular, in 2008, they have enacted the rules for this act, 2006 act, Public Procurement Act. Now they are saying whatever is in that Public Procurement Act, they don't need to follow it. They can bypass it for the sake of this quick enhancement law. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Then, uh, at section four, undertaking plans and accepting proposals. If you again look into the wording of the section, it says the government and all enterprises owned or controlled by the government may undertake any plan under this act for quick enactment, enhancement of the generation, transmission, transportation, and marketing of electricity or energy or may accept any proposal, look at the wording, any proposal for undertaking any plan regarding import of electricity or energy from abroad and transmission, transportation and marketing thereof and quick implementation of the same. Look, if you look into the wording of the sentence making, the wording of the uh, particular section that there is no check and balance. They are, not, they are basically waiving all those options. <coughs> You cannot question them why they have taken up this plan. Because they said any, the word any, quote unquote any, they can take up any proposal 
from anyone from any organization either to implement all these plans locally or to import electricity from abroad this is how all these uh, advisors to the, to the prime minister advised her to import electricity and pay this high amount of cap electricity charges and uh, <coughs> popularly we call it in our country the quick rental charges so this this is these are the provisions of how the government um, it wasted our money by for the quick rentals because of this this particular section because no one can question them and they have this unfettered authority to accept any proposal under section 4 then um, if i come to section 5 it says proposal processing committee and its terms of reference they have created a pro proposal processing committee this proposal processing committee can do or undo anything according to this particular section they are not accountable to anyone <coughs> sorry they can take up any proposal again any the word i am emphasizing they can take up any proposal plan for carrying out the purpose of this act and then uh, keeping consistent with the technical um, liabilities technical um, aspects of the case the government shall form this uh, proposal processing committee then what they do this proposal processing committee basically finalizes the process uh, pro proposals to some extent and then forward it to the cabinet for their final approval in the ministry of in the ministry of energy and mineral resources they basically do nothing other than just giving approval this is this is what it happens basically it sounds like they have the uh, final authority to give approval to a proposal but in fact this proposal processing committee is doing the main job then the uh, uh, cabinet uh, members they are just giving uh, some paper approvals of the uh, proposals uh, <laughs> in fact then if i come to um uh section subsection 2 of section 5 this is quite important i'm just going to read the wording for the purpose of implementing the plan the processing committee shall communicate consult and bargain with any organization again the word any any organization concerned to the of the competency experience and financial capability of such organization prepare a proposal containing such recommendations as may serve the best of the public interest <coughs> now this is again the word public interest is mentioned here uh, it is very peculiar in our country the this, this public interest concept is always overriding with each other always um, overlapping basically with each other this is Uh, the way the format form they formatted the language of the section really very carefully we have the uh, earlier and uh, the, the uh, of those new or no reason consider their interest carefully instead of the interest <laughs> now section section the public proposal and purchase or investment proposal is placed under the very small one i am going to read out the section 9 which is basically created this immunity because our emphasis today is on the immunity of the energy sector in bangladesh section 9 says bar to jurisdiction of court etc no question regarding the validity of any act the word any again any act done or purported to be done any action taken or any order issued or direction given under this act shall be raised in any court but this law has been enacted in 2010 then subsequently it has gone through certain amendments <coughs> sorry until 2018 but we have number of decisions um in the supreme court of bangladesh um, especially i'm going to recall one uh, which is basically popularly known as 
amendment judgment of the supreme court constitution's eighth amendment judgment of the supreme court wherein the supreme court um, very clearly held that no law can limit the jurisdiction of the supreme court of bangladesh that was in 1988 and the judgment was pronounced in 1989 and then in 2010 we are having a law again curtailing or excluding the jurisdiction of the court that you cannot challenge the action of the um, under this act taken or uh, any order issued or given under this act by any authority or the so called uh, proposal processing committee or the cabinet or the financial committee so this is against our um, law because the law i am saying because according to our article 111 of the constitution whatever um, decision is pronounced by the supreme court of bangladesh becomes law so that is the understanding of law the process of law as well so now if i come to uh, section 10 that is another problematic area which basically allowed these people this organization to play as as they wish the um, section 10 raised um, protection for protection of action taken in good faith no suit or prosecution or any other legal proceeding shall lie against any officer or employee for anything which is in good faith done or purported to be done at the time of discharging his duties under this act or rules made and general or special order passed there under so this good faith thing good faith principle if you consider this good faith principle for the criminal proceedings then <coughs> sorry then there are certain conditions you need to fulfill uh, according to the uh, bangladesh penal code 1860 there are certain conditions you need to fulfill to take this um, safeguard of good faith but for civil actions the area is still grey and they are taking um, the benefit of this section altogether with section 9 which bars the jurisdiction of the court because we are we are unable to challenge this but having said that there are precedents of challenging this immunity or indemnity in the court and successfully done by this present government basically the first one i should mention is the indemnity ordinance of 1975 which basically indemnified the killers of the father of the nation in 1996 the aumilik led government they have repealed the law which paved the way for holding trial against those killers of the father of the nation and if i can uh, cite certain cases uh, like sharier uh, major sharier and uh, bazur rashid all these people the present law minister was one of the lawyers in the team he has argued in the supreme court that there are certain things uh, from the um, from the defense side are good in the court that according to section 6 of the general clauses act if, uh, if a particular law is repealed then all the privileges allowed or recorded under the earlier law <coughs> does not cease to exist the people still enjoy those rights <coughs> the i sorry the high court division as well as the appellate division has that no that is not the position and uh, the uh, present law minister who was a pa- part of that lawyer team at the time he he successfully argued that no that is not the that is not the case section 6 of the general clause said does not really apply in this case and uh, um, they are they are liable for their actions and similar actions we have seen in um, in the uh, eighth amendment case uh, supreme court categorically um, Uh, defined the position of the uh, bangladesh jurisdiction on this particular point and again in uh, 2016 we had this joint dry indemnity bill which has been enacted by the then bnp led government uh, they uh, had a joint operation uh, where they have killed at least about uh, 57 people who were told to be died out of heart attack basically killed in the action against terrorism 
and uh, a large number of people were injured over 12000 people were in prison at that time <coughs> during 2002 and 2003 and the high court division again um, in 2016 um it was basically order was, judgment was pronounced in 2015 but uh, it was uh, finally published in 2016 it again clearly holds that no the action of the um, joint team who has carried out this uh, killing at that relevant time 2002 and 2003 cannot be indemnified because this is against the uh, provisions of article 46 of the constitution article 46 um is a special provision and it should be uh, used sparingly that is the main uh, crux of the judgment of uh, 2016 judge so um if we consider this um uh, quick enhancement of uh, power and energy uh, supply special provisions act 2010 we can also challenge this because the present government um uh, initially took the step to uh, repeal the indemnity act of 1975 so they cannot argue otherwise at this uh, moment and uh, this is what we are seeing like because of this earlier precedents i have mentioned there are a number of cases we can um, we can successfully challenge this i hope so and uh, with the bangladesh working group and uh, um, this um, school of uh, people flow we are working together on this and uh, hopefully with the help of all other friends so uh, together we can challenge this before and i can see light uh, it's not like on the uh, dark on the end of the tunnel i can see light uh, if we work really hard if we press it really hard if the normal court uh, situation uh, resumes to work again uh, like before we can uh, hopefully challenge this in the court so i'll <coughs> i'll rest my initial <coughs> response here I'll, i'll be happy to answer any questions